Hello, everyone. This morning is Sunday, November 10th, 2019. This is the Plainfield Christian Science Roundtable Discussion. We are recording from Plainfield, New Jersey, the United States of America, and we are an independent church, and we welcome all of you today. Thank you for joining. And we will start with our morning prayer. An excerpt from a handwritten letter from Mrs. Eddie to James Neal, January 28th, 1897. The text of the letter can be found in Lyman Powell's book, Mary Baker Eddy, A Life-Size Portrait, on page 316. Pray daily. Never miss praying, no matter how often. Quote, Lead me not into temptation. Unquote. Scientifically rendered, lead me not to lose sight of strict purity. Clean, pure thoughts. Let all my thoughts and aims be high, unselfish, charitable, meek, spiritually minded. With this altitude of thought, your mind is losing materiality and gaining spirituality. And this is the state of mind that heals the sick. Mary Baker Eddy. Beautiful. Thank, Thank you. you. And the watching point? Watching point number 435. Watch that you do not forget in your joy over Christian science healing that the most significant thing about it is that it proves that the Christ has come to earth again. Although, of course, as Mrs. Eddy says on page 180 of Miscellaneous Writings, quote, Christ never left. Christ is truth, and truth is always here, the impersonal Savior. End quote. Thank you. Any comments? Joy. It's important. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, it is. And joy and gratitude, two essential ingredients to any healing. So we have a lot to be grateful for. The comforter is here. I think the sense that the Christ never left is also so important because people, you know, when they think of Christ Jesus, I think mostly they're thinking of Jesus and that he's not here and, you know, we have to reach out somewhere for him, for God and all that. Christ, the beautiful uh, definition, uh, God manifested right here, has always been here, so is with us all the time. And it's helpful to know that Wherever I go, no matter what, Christ is here. Like that deer, uh, the deer's, um, is it the deer's song or something? The deer's cry, yeah, that's The beautiful. deer's cry says, Christ here, everywhere, in me, around me, over me. I, I just love that. Hmm. He that's never beautiful. left. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. That's exactly right, Florence. Yes. And in, in this lesson, our lesson this week, Adam and Fallen Man. We're going to talk about this because the Christ is the Christ consciousness is what lifts us out of this false belief that we are fallen and um, born into matter and will suffer and then die out of it. It's not what the Christ consciousness says. And we have all whole ability through the Christ to lift, our, lift ourselves out of this dream because it is a dream. It's a dream world and we can prove that. And the fact that we can is the source of our joy. Yes, that's, that's why right. we can be so grateful to Mary Baker Eddy for explaining clearly, scientifically, that fact. Thank you. Yeah, because nothing else makes sense. That song, what's it all about, Alfie? <laughs> you know, you wonder why you're here. What? What is? What is this? But. Christian science makes sense of this whole 
seeming human mess. <laughs> and so twice a year we talk about this topic, Adam and fallen man, to lift us out of that dream world into the truth of our being. So, Jeffrey, would you read the golden text for us? Thou shalt be perfect with the Lord thy God. Yes, thank you. And, Shardy, what did you find about perfect? In oh, I, it's, it's over and over again. This is a beautiful lesson. They all are. But this really, really is special, too. And perfect, I looked it up in the 1828, and uh, it's fully in board, complete. And then he was so wise to put in, you're perfect, even as your father in heaven from Matthew, and manifesting perfection all the time, and that our strength is made perfect in our weakness when we go to God, and that's Corinthians. And before coming here, I grappled with this this idea of perfection, but it's so clear. And Mrs. Eddy is so wise that she made this lesson about Adam and the fallen man. And here at this church, they explain it beautifully. And it's just a wonderful thing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And in Joe's forum comment, she says, mortal mind says perfection is impossible. <laughs> Christ's truth says otherwise. So, okay, and we have talked about this before, but just to remind everyone, what, what is this human perfection? I guess it would be looking good <laughs> to yourself and others and, and matching a certain ideal that you find in magazines and such things. Thank you. Being yes. nice. Yeah. Pleasing people. It's well, a self-centric. Self-centered. That's very yeah. true. That's it. Well, it's a trap, isn't it? Because there's no foundation for it. <laughs> Whatever foundation you might think it has, is like fashion. It goes in and out of fashion, you know, or the medical profession will tell you this is the perfect drug. Next year, oops, no, no, it's not. <laughs> Something Coffee's else good. is. Bad. <laughs> Inconsistent. So it's a trap. There's no such thing as human perfection. Yeah. It's a contradiction in terms. And this idea, this statement, Thou shalt be perfect with the Lord thy God. Well, this statement has a lot of levels, doesn't it? First of all, it's a statement of what is true. You are perfect with the Lord your God. Or because since God is perfect, how could he create anything unperfect? Then on a human level, it's a promise. It's, it's a statement of divine law. It's a promise. Yes, you can be perfect. And there is a way. But there's only one way. And that is to acknowledge <laughs> the reality of your creation. Um, you're born, Eddie. Or human, it isn't going to work. Go ahead. Was that Michael? Yes. Well, just uh, I think Mrs. Eddie says um, that if mortal mind could be better, it would be better. And uh, I remember, um, I think Herbert Eustace writes that it's like charities, even though it, on the surface it looks really good, you're giving something away and it's being charitable. It's the human version of it, which is you can't be any better, you can't do any better, so I have to help you, or somebody's somehow cursed and we have to pull them out of that. And so it's, while it looks like it's blessing someone, it's actually also malpracticing on them, uh, saying somebody's helpless or some, somehow somebody is um, 
insufficient. <clears throat> yes. Yeah, we call that human do-goody as opposed to compassionate love, which does help and does lift people up out. And turns them to God rather than to human ways and means for their answers. Because otherwise they only become further enslaved and trapped and dependent on false dependencies. And so again, that equation for evil, G G I minus W equals E, good intentions minus wisdom equals evil. And there are those beautiful readings on Wednesday about wisdom. Wisdom must be in every aspect of what we do. And if we feel we don't have it, we ask God for it. Well, yes. I was, Go oh, ahead. Sorry. <laughs> well, I was reading something last night that uh, said if we identify with the human, we're identifying with that which is on its way out. <laughs> and I thought to myself, I don't want to. <laughs> that is not what I want to identify with. Something that's on its way out. Where does that, you know? So I thought, wow, that's a. <laughs> why, and why is it on its way out? Because it has. It's nothing. It's 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 the complete opposite to what God is, and so that which is all, which is God. <laughs> <laughs> nullifies anything that claims to be anything other than that. So I, you know, I don't want to go out with the baby's going out. I don't want, or the bath water's going out or whatever. That is. <laughs> I don't want to go out with it. <laughs> so I got to, you know, identify with what is and not with what's going, not with what's on its way out. I thought that was a really good way to think about it. And this is why, you know, Christian science is the cutting edge. We're ahead of the ball game. All these false systems are going to pass, pass, yes, pass away. But science, that truth never will. And people think it's the other way around. Oh, we're a dying religion. We're not, you know, not, not relevant and all this stuff. Well, ha, 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 again. <laughs> no, 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 uh-uh. They don't understand what it is. So, yeah. well, and this idea of perfection, because we've all known, and perhaps we ourselves have tried to be per perfectionists, working really hard to get everything just right, whatever it is. And usually you drive yourself absolutely crazy and everyone around you crazy as well. Perfection that uh, we're talking about is, is reflection. It is, it has to do with God reflecting him and that's why in, in that quote of that Florence, or excuse me, Shardy wrote about, you know, in weakness, my strength is made perfect in weakness. When you understand this and you're humble before God and realize you can't, of my own self, I can do nothing, then this idea of perfection comes. And the perfection is of God. I mean, look at the perfection in nature, all the flowers and trees and leaves and the beauty of it all. And that, that is, the, you look at it in a, in a smile of, of a little child and they don't have to be perfectly dressed and their hair perfect. It's, it's their inner beauty shining. I'll never forget. I, it was some movie with Steve Martin, whom I love. And anyway, he was dating this girl and, you know, she was absolutely perfect to look at her hair, her clothes. and But she was a B-I-T-C-H. <laughs> and so anyway, he when she was surprised he was no longer interested in her, he said something like, well, I ne I've never found hate attractive. And how true. I thought that was the one thing I remember about the movie. Even though she was physically perfect, with quotes around perfect, she she was not a reflection of God and therefore strive as you may to bring out human perfection. It will always fail. And I want to mention something here now too, because in the quarterly, this October, November, December, there were several mistakes. We had to resend it 
once because the date was wrong, which was, you know, the Thanksgiving date, which was a major mistake. There's going to be another mistake coming up. We have two citations in on one line, which we are not going to send out a new quarterly for. But there was also a mistake in the full text this week. Maybe some of you saw it. There was a it instead of an it. So I want the I want the proofers now to talk about this because our standard has been perfection for all that we do. How do you achieve that perfection, Carol? Well, my best thing is to ask God to show me what's really there uh, and not to let me overlook or not to um, think I see what should be there. You know, if it's a familiar quote, you kind of skim over it. But you can't. You have to do every word, every letter. And to ask God to help and to know that there's no obstruction, there's no interference, there's no opposition to this work of God. This is holy work. And it needs to be thought of that way and it needs to be respected that way. And in that way, perfection will come through. Thank you. Lil? I always, when I start, say, God, you are doing this, not me. Use me. Thank you. Dale W. Of course, <clears throat> always start with prayer and ask God to show the way and know that nothing can interfere with this work mm -hmm. and no, no human things or physical things, not being tired or sleepy or anything god is directing and all i can do is reflect what god is thank you because that's often you know something that comes in or you're rushed or you're trying to fit it in at a certain time you consider it holy work holy ground you can't you can't do it that way you can't you've got to have this it's a great honor to do it you can't think i've done it a million times before um, no, each time is different and you have to be on your knees in weakness. We find our strength. You know, that wonderful statement of Mrs. Eddy, as Mary Baker Eddy, I am the weakest of mortals, but as discoverer and founder of Christian science, I am bone and sinew of the world. This is in a much lesser, of course, comparison, but this work of science for the world we we have to treat it as as holy ground. This is true of everything that anybody does for the church, whether it's proofing, whether it's reading, whether it's writing, you no, know, whatever, whatever. It has to be done as a reflection of what God wants for His children. Any Betty in California? Hi. Um, I try to look at doing this with a listening thought, that, that I'm listening for God's direction and ask for help for that, and also to get Betty the heck out of the way and watch out for pride. Oh, I can do this. Thank you. A anyone else? Any of the other proofers? Well, I would... I ask, uh, Father, you are my vision, and Thank you. I will see what I need to see to do your perfect work, for it is you that works within me. Thank you. Very important. And as we get into this lesson more and more, you're going to see how vision is what we're seeing. Either brings out what the Adam dream or the truth of being, our vision, and, and that beautiful hymn that, Florence gave to us, be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart. What are you seeing? And I have found, and I don't do proofing anymore, but I used to do quite a bit of it. I, I look for perfection. You, you look for perfection. And when you're looking for per per perfection, if there's something not perfect, guess what? It'll jump out. It'll jump right out. It'll knock you over. <laughs> so have that in your heart. Look for that perfect typesetting or whatever else you're reading. And then something very important that Mrs. Evans always taught us was check. Check, check and double check. Check, <laughs> check, check and double check. 
<laughs> now that's the more of the human footsteps of it, but that's why we have so many checkers, proofers. Just because, you know, one person has checked it, we check, check, and double check. And so now, because some of these mistakes, some of the proofing was perfect, but then the printing didn't come out right. Right? Yes. <laughs> so, so Lil is now going to check that, double check that, check, check, and double check. Perfection. Perfection is in the details. Is that that statement? Well, and also the devil's in the details, too. Really. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we look for the perfection in the details, and when we see the devil, we cast it out. And Jeremy has had, you know, he has had the lion's share of so much of what we do here. So um, we're so grateful that he takes on this work lovingly and humbly. And it's why so much, I mean, the vast majority of what we do is, is perfection. But we have to keep that standard. The plumb line keeps us all on our toes. I, I wanted to mention one other thing that um, I guess it was Barbara wrote on the, I forget, bulletin board. It was about our, the world, we have a world prayer at the end of our service. You know, we have a few moments to pray for the world. In the manual, Mrs. Eddy does say that we should, in the service, we pray collectively and exclusively for the congregation. Mm -hmm. I don't know when we started this praying, praying for the world. It was many, many years ago. So if, if anyone objects, which I guess from what Barbara wrote, she, she objected or questioned it, um, you know, let us know. I don't, in praying deeply about it, I don't think Mrs. Eddy would disapprove of a few moments of praying for the world at the end of the service. We have the prayer in the beginning before the Lord's Prayer, and that absolutely should be for the those participating, those in the service. But if any of you do, please write us. Lord knows you will. <laughs> and, you know, let us know. We can certainly eliminate that. I, I know a lot of people, and especially new people who come to our church, they think it's a very good thing, you know. But, I mean, I guess to be exactly correct to what the manual says, maybe we shouldn't. I, I myself wondered about it. So. You know, I, whatever, whatever you think, we're independent church. I actually have been thinking of that. When I first came here, I was really surprised at the reach of this church. And over time, it's been shown that we're reaching further and further. God's opening the way. So now I just kind of think that the entire world is a congregation and they just, some people don't realize it yet, but eventually they will. And that's just the way it is. So. Well, that is a beautiful thought. Yes, I like that. Yes. So we right we thought. are obeying the manual. <laughs> you know, our, just the our, world is our congregation. Yes. I mean, we put the, oh, yes, we're one. There's a hundred and something countries, right? Yeah. Yep. Soon to be all of them, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Jeremy. That brings great clarity to that. So... Okay, now, so we, our perfection is in God, and we don't humanly strain and stress to get it. We get ourselves out of the way, as some of the, one of the proofers said, get yourself out of the way, let be his reflection. It, and that is in no strain and stress. The hymn 49, take from us now the strain and stress, and let our ordered lives confess the beauty of thy peace. Is that Florence? Yes. I think the this uh, perfect God, perfect man, we must remember he's saying that we have to have that as the basis of thought and demonstration. So the humble acceptance of that alone, not, not because we don't understand or I, I'm confused, all this, but there has to be that humble acceptance of that fact, the spiritual fact. And so, so then we can work, you know, from that. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Yes. And, and an honest acceptance of what's, what's not right. It is an intolerance of error. You shouldn't accept things that aren't right because then you over, you just 
what's the word? You kind of, you lose your plumb line. But again, this is God working in your home, in your life. You know, you want to have a p- perfect body. So what do some people do? They run, they, they take all this <clears throat> vitamins, they, they lift weights, they diet, they, well, that's, no, perfect body, <laughs> it come, again, it's reflection. You want to have a perfect Thanksgiving dinner. Well, timers, this, timers, that. I'll make all these lists. I'll do this. I'll do that. I'll be a nervous wreck by the time Thanksgiving Day comes. No, but it's, it is listening. Someone said that for the proofing. <laughs> Listen, what does God say? What you should serve, when you should serve it, how you should make it. What is God telling you? When you should take it out, when you should put it on the table, when who you should invite. God, 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 God. And guess what? Your dinner will be perfect. Perfect. And if there is something that right, if you are expressing the radiancy of God's love, who cares? Who cares if you burn the string beans? Honestly, who cares? You don't beat yourself over it. You have something else ready. You do. And mainly you have your smile and your joy and your love of the people attending. So I love um, this, the article Asserting What's True by Herbert Eustace, and where he says to affirm anything is to assert its possibility and that when you affirm that which is true, although human reasoning and sight may say it is not true at all, you will bring it to pass. Why? Because it's already the fact. Thank you. And yeah. I, you know, with perfection, it is the fact. Doesn't matter what what mortal mind would try to. That is the fact. It will, it will come to pass. It will. You'll see it. That's just the way it is. So I love, mm-hmm. love that. Thank you. Yes, I love and, that. Sorry. No. No, I love that fact that you know God as the great physician. That's what He's seeing in me perfection so what am i thinking i love that too i love the fact that he is our great physician and when you have difficulty with any any problems you know he knows you he created you his law goes into your inward parts he'll tell you what you need or what correction you need in your think thought or in your life to make what greater position could there possibly be? We turn to him always, and he will. He, he's, he's our healer, our comforter. He is our everything. And in the, in the responsive reading this week, week, there are things to tell us how to keep perfect. And one, well, they're everyone, but... One is, delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. So what is it to delight yourself in the Lord? How how do you do that? Um. To me, thank God that Mrs. Eddy showed us through the synonyms, the nature of God. So to how much of that nature am I identifying with, and joyfully so, so that they become my own, what I know about myself. Thank you. Now the synonyms of God you cannot work with too much <laughs> and apply them to yourself. Exactly. I thank God every day for life. I thank God that he, he is life, that he's my life, that he is your life, and we're alive. Thank God for truth. The fact that the, the universe isn't just a haphazard. There, are, there, there is a truth that governs the universe, that governs my life, that governs all of us. I thank God for love. The fact that love destroys hate. What a comfort that is. 
What a protection. What an instruction. It's a beautiful article for our magazine. <laughs> <laughs> really. And what does Mrs. Eddie say about gratitude? Are you grateful for life, truth, and love? Well, that's how you be grateful. What Gary just said, that's beautiful. That is delighting yourself in the Lord. Delight means to a high degree of pleasure. Do you love the Lord thy God with all thy mind, heart, soul? Do you delight in him? Are you just so grateful for any time you can spend with him? And that's all day if you want to and all night too. But, but loving him for what he is, not because he gave you that car you wanted or the whatever, but because just because he is, I think it's in Eustace where he talks about, he saw an old Bible, right? And, and the worn pages were all the ones sort of pleading, asking God for things. But the pages that were not used hardly at all were attitude pages. Yes, the praising God pages. Thank you, God. Thanking God. This is the season. We got to make sure we keep it up high in our hearts now. High, high, high. Because, you know, everybody else is the turkey trot. I even, I've seen it in many instances recently. Not Thanksgiving. Friendsgiving. Friendsgiving. Because it's all about, all about friends and family. It's not, what, who, what? Who gave us the friends and family? Excuse me. And and where where is everybody Thanksgiving morning when we are here thanking God? Football, Football games. <laughs> and now it's become a shopping day. They've even uh, changed it now to a big shopping day. Oh no. <laughs> and and I just when I when I heard that not too long ago, I thought Okay, well, that <laughs> of course, that's the secular, you know, we've got everybody in their home. We've got to get them to the mall. So rather than Black Friday, now it starts on Thanksgiving, actually Thanksgiving. And I'm just, oh, well, <laughs> oh, oh, boy, you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> I, know. I know it. No, that's appalling to me. Black yeah. is is appalling enough, but to have it on Thanksgiving Day. Without yeah. God, there would be no friends and family. There would right. be nothing. There would be nothing. And, and we, just like we're learning in our Bible studies, people who turned away from God and just enjoyed their own pleasures and were mean to other people, they went down. They did. Thanksgiving is the only holiday that Mrs. Eddy determined deserved another church service. Um, Thanksgiving started during the Civil War. Lincoln started it right in the middle of the Civil War. So, I mean, with all that was going on, he wanted everybody to congregate and give thanks, even while all this stuff was going on. There's a reason why Mrs. Eddie had Abraham Lincoln hanging on the wall of her home. <laughs> she yeah. loved that man and what he represented and what he did to, to prepare for the discovery. Because without the Civil War, there'd be no... We had to have a unified country. Lincoln had to do what he did this had to, i just saw the movie harriet last night and i and i i was just so grateful for all those people that heard the term god so many times in that movie and there were so many people in there it was an inspiring movie but i thought the the, the civil you know abraham lincoln just he had to do what he did to prepare for the science that was to come and it could only have come in a unified, get rid of slavery and unify this country. It was all preparing for the discovery. And, uh, wow, but right in the middle of it, he, he had this day of Thanksgiving. 
Thank and, you. Uh, I, I also thought it was associated with George Washington for some reason. He didn't but, have a set date. Maybe oh, okay. he set the date. But Maybe George he Washington set the date. did have did. every year he would proclaim a day of Thanksgiving. Thank so you. You're right about that. And we're going to have coming up in the in the next years some um, liberators devoted to our founding fathers, all of them, and that's not that includes Civil War, going through the ages, how we trusted in God, and it was God who saved us time and time and time again. Parthens yeah. has practically written us written it for us. He sent all these quotes from all of these people in the in our past quoting god the importance of god and then he also sent me a little book and this was a while ago called the miracles of our country because there were so many times we definitely shouldn't have won or but it was only through god's grace and and shardy gave me the book about the constitution and how when everyone was wasn't agreeing and and having you know no one was agreeing on anything it was ben franklin said stop we're going to have some time we're just all going to pray. And that yeah. prayer continues. It continues today in our country, in our Congress. And I know that there was some kind of a movie out there saying that these people want to take the world over. Oh, well, if they do, it's they want God to take the world over, the Christ consciousness to take the world over. Um, I just feel like they were trying to cause division and doubt to pe people of faith, people who believe in the power of prayer. And so we are going to counteract that in our magazine time and time again we are. And our Christmas one, mm -hmm. of Christmas and Quietude, it's just the most beautiful thing. And Luann painted the most beautiful picture of this woman sitting by a fireplace in a white gown. Mm -hmm. Christmas. Observing Christmas and Quietude. And she researched it. Luann, are you here? Yes. Go ahead. Um, the woman is sitting in um, Mrs. Ed Bentwood Rocker. Um, the Christmas mm. tree is, is decorated. There's no electricity at all in the picture. The Christmas tree is decorated with beads and crocheted snowflakes and crocheted icicles. And... On the table beside her is a vase of winter honeysuckle, and those honeysuckles represent um, devoted affection and bonds of love. And there's also a plant of health on the table. And she's reading the Bible. And she's reading the Bible, and it is simplicity and the beauty of it. It is perfection, okay? It is perfection. Luann never had any training in painting. She never went to an art class. She just sits and lets God use her. She, and not only did she do that, she also did my, one of my favorite poems, To a Waterfowl. She painted this beautiful picture of the sunset with the birds flying. And she did that in a matter of, of days, really. She, she is, you see what God has brought to this church? I mean, goodness only God could do these things. It's just beautiful. So I hope all of you really appreciate our magazine. It is it, The way it comes together, honestly, and I say that with great modesty, it's better than ever. It's God, and all of you contribute. You, you write, you give testimonies, and Carol sits there, and they're just flying through her hands, and she's ordering everything, and, and, and they are astounding. They truly are. So don't forget our magazine with everything else we have on the website. <laughs> so back to when you delight yourself in the Lord, you take pleasure, just as Gary told us. He shall g d give you the desires of your heart. And Shardy, what were you saying about? About when things happen. When you uh, come in here, after I came here and started to really learn and, and love more, and things that I thought about even that I needed would show up. And it's just so amazing to me. I talked to some other people about it too, because I think little things and then big things too. Uh, and it, it's just overwhelmingly beautiful. And, and, 
Thank you, Shardy. So true. You know, Mrs. Eddie once said that, you know, she all she'd have to do is ask for something and it would come to her. Now, this is this is not some magic trick that you can conjure up. This was a a, a life devoted to God. She delighted herself in God and he did give her the desires of her heart to some degree. I feel I feel the same way. Well, and, 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 the, and the reason that works, it's not like you can wish for something and will it. No, it's not new age. No. It's new not age. new age. But when you delight yourself in the Lord, the desires of your heart are pure. They're not selfish. The then when you do that, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, the desires of your heart are generous and and compassionate to all mankind and whatever you need to fulfill that god gives it to you go Go ahead florence yeah i think when you delight yourself this is what i was saying about connecting with the these the, the incredible valuable um attributes of the synonyms you are not resisting the reflection, the expression, the the lesson just tells us that man is the expression of God's being. So if you're delighting yourself with who God is, as Mrs. Eddy so beautifully explains to us, then you are allowing the expression. So why won't you have what you know what's already there? There's no resistance to it. Thank you. So yes. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. And 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 what is it, son? All that all that I have is thine. Yeah. All that the father has is ours. When we are that reflection, nothing nothing missing. But you're also not seeking it and selfishly looking for it. It just it just is seeking the kingdom of heaven, and all these things shall be added unto you. Just have it. I'm sorry. I think it's supremely natural. I mean, this is our at one moment with God, and that's proof of it. Yes. I must say, um, let's not forget principle. I think principle is not one of the subjects we we um, read, or it's part of the subject uh, list. <clears throat> but I hear a lot of, I'm so overwhelmed, you know, life, you know, everything is all over the place. And yet principle is orderliness. Just think sometimes we might miss uh, the value of it, thinking it as part of God's nature. It's days to be orderly, yeah. And that's part of the gratitude, too. When you're you're grateful, you will be ordered. You won't be all over the place. You'll have some order to your life. Your home will be ordered. Everything you do, and it's in this responsive reading, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And he delighteth in his way. He delights. And that could be both ways. Man delights in God's way or God delights in man's way when when you let him order your life. But yeah, order, very important. Principled living, not, not disobeying rules and laws of the land. You live up to it as best you can. And then also that commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Commit means to give to give in trust, to put into the hands or power of another. So when you just, which I know a lot of you are doing right now, I commit my way to God. I put, I put it all in your hands, God. Whatever you want, whatever you say, he'll bring what's needed to pass it'll come it'll happen but again you can't take this you can't do it humanly it's it's a divine it's divine thing who is speaking we we had a watch uh not too long ago number 27 that i just i cut it out and i just keep it i mean i've got the watches in the book but i just had to have this in front of me every day where it says Watch lest you believe that you're trying to perfect yourself rather than to make a channel of yourself through which the perfect idea of man may be expressed. 
there's a distinction between trying to make a perfect man of yourself and trying to express the perfect man through yourself. And wow, it's just. <laughs> and that's, that's exactly what we're talking about. Absolutely. Yeah. It is. And people misunderstand it or they think it's impossible. And it's there's only one way to make it possible. And that's as a reflection, as, as getting you out of the way and letting God use you. Then you will have everything you seek in the way of perfect health, home, everything else. And it'll be perfect in a different way. It'll be the beauty of holiness. It won't be this human perfection where, oh, don't sit on my couch or don't do <laughs> or whatever. Um, also. And Mrs. Eddy speaks to that in the lesson, doesn't she? She says mortals are not fallen children of God. They never had a perfect state of being, which may subsequently be regained. They were from the beginning of mortal history, conceived in sin and brought forth in iniquity. So if you're trying to fix something, you know, fix a mortal person, you're starting, you're starting on the wrong basis. Because the mortal person was never true in the first place. That's a tough one for a lot of us to wrap our heads around. But yeah. That's why I forget all the dieting and stuff. You're trying to fix a mortal person. Reflect God, and he'll tell you what to eat or what not to eat. You know, let, let God, God is the answer to it all. And, you know, every morning, this was a statement Mrs. Evans often gave us, is that Second Samuel, God is my strength and power. He maketh my way perfect. To know this, when you're feeling weak, when you're feeling without power, God is my strength and power. He maketh my way perfect. And then, and this is very important, Genesis 1, and God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. He saw it. He saw what he made, and it was good. And behold, that means to fix the eye upon, to see with attention. And that goes to Citation 11, which is also a most important statement. Citation 11. Well, I'm yes. Jesus beheld, beheld. He fixed his attention on it. In science, the perfect man who appeared to him where sinning mortal man appears to mortals. In this perfect man, the Savior saw God's own likeness. And this correct view of man healed the sick. What are you seeing? Are you seeing the... Adam dream and if you are cleanse yourself of it purify sanctify the word sanctify is in this week's lesson in the Jesus's prayer in John sanctify them through the truth thy word is truth cleanse purify make holy prepare for divine service that is, I kept thinking of that hymn, hymn 157, Jesus' Prayer for All Mankind, echoes down throughout the ages. Jesus prayed this for us now. He prayed for his disciples. He prayed for people then. But this prayer is with us today, the sanctification prayer, to prepare us for divine service, to cleanse, to make us holy. It's beautiful to think of this. And Mrs. Eddy did this too. She didn't just pray for her time. She prayed throughout all generations. And you must as well. And you're watching in our prayer. It's not just for right now. This truth will go down through the ages. We must know it. Cannot be intercepted or interfered with in any way. And that's why the manual of the church is divine, divinely directed. It can't be altered can't be corrupted it can't be changed by human opinion it is for all mankind for all time forever and Linda spoke to the perfect model and to be present in your thoughts instead of its demoralized opposite so think about that what kind of model do you have 
What what are you looking to? Do you look at old people, <laughs> the Adam dream, and think that's going to how you're going to end up? Well, please correct your thought about everything and everybody. And last but certainly not least was what Parthens wrote, which was beautiful. I know Jeremy, who's gone upstairs now, but he loved this. You must have birds in your heart, madam, before you can find them in the bushes, said mm -hmm. John Burroughs, the great naturalist, to a woman who complained that no birds ever came to her orchard, while he counted a score or more, even while she uttered her plaint. So, Orison Sweat Martin. So, what does that mean? You have to have the birds in your heart. <laughs> Well, there's nothing outside of us. It's all within. So every once in a while, I think I'm not in a house. The house is in me. I'm not a, in a body. The body's in me. So the birds, which I love birds. I've got a, hundreds of hummingbirds that we feed. But they're not out there. They're in me. So that's where they really are and where they exist. Thank you. Because you love them. You love yep. them. They're yep. in your yep. heart. Yes. And you will bring yeah. them. This again, this isn't new age. This is a divine. This is what Mrs. Eddy did everywhere she went. It was what was in her heart. She saw it. And the rest of what Parthens wrote was about disarming. We are disarming. He says you're disarming and overcoming. Disarm, disarm evil. Disarm sin, disease. We're disarming it. We're we're rendering it powerless by knowing the all power of God's presence. So, thank you all for all your wonderful comments. We're going to end today with some notes on true vision by John Morgan. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the Christ. The Christ is the ideal of God and discovers to human sight man in the divine image. The Christ view transfigures our human concept of man so that we behold man to be the, a transparency for truth, just as Jesus served as a window for God. He that hath seen me, man, rightly, hath seen the Father, John 14. We look out with Christ-colored glasses. But this Christ light is not abstract and static. It is dynamic and practical. For truth inevitably has an effect upon our misconceptions. Therefore, the Christ view is not only my eyes, it is also my physician and healer, remaking, restoring, and renewing. This Christ view translates the infinite to the infinitesimal so that I see divinity manifested in the smallest details of life. Everything is illuminated and transformed by the spirit of truth. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.